In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you, and with your spirit. I've not switched my own monitor on the altar, but uh, yeah, we're on the right screen. Uh, welcome all. I hope you can hear me. I asked at the beginning to let me know that the sound is working well for my voice. I know you'll be able to hear the music, um, and I, I trust it is. So uh, let's hope that's the case. Uh, I won't say too many words, though. So uh, as we begin the celebration of Mass now... We call to mind our sins and ask God for his mercy and his grace. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You were seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and eternal God, our refuge in every danger, to whom we turn in our distress, in faith we pray. Look with compassion on the afflicted. Grant eternal rest to the dead, comfort to mourners, healing to the sick, peace to the dying, strength to healthcare workers, wisdom to our leaders and the courage to reach out to all in love, so that together we may give glory to your holy name. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, for ever and ever. Amen. And now we have our readings from Scripture, which, as always, have been prepared by members of our parish family. A reading from the Book of Apocalypse. I, John, heard the voice I had heard from heaven speaking to me again. Go, it said, and take that open scroll out of the hand of the angel standing on sea and land. I went to the angel and asked him to give me the small scroll, and he said, Take it and eat it. It will turn your stomach... A reading from the book of Apocalypse. I, John, heard the voice I had heard from heaven speaking to me again. Go, it said, and take that open scroll out of the hand of the angel standing on sea and land. I went to the angel and asked him to give me the small scroll, and he said, Take it and eat it. It will turn your stomach sour, but in your mouth it will taste as sweet as honey. So I took it out of the angel's hand and swallowed it. It was as sweet as honey in my mouth, 
but when I had eaten it, my stomach turned sour. Then I was told, you are to prophesy again, this time about many different nations and countries and languages and emperors. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. The response to the psalm. Your promise is sweet to my taste, O Lord. Your promise is sweet to my taste, O Lord. I rejoice to do your will, as though all riches were mine. Your will is my delight. Your statutes are my counsellors. Your promise is sweet to my taste, O Lord. The law from your mouth means more to me than silver and gold. Your promise is sweeter to my taste than honey in the mouth. Your promise is sweet to my taste, O Lord. Your will is my heritage forever, the joy of my heart. I open my mouth and I sigh as I yearn for your commands. Your promise is sweet to my taste, O Lord. Gospel affirmation. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Isaiah, Christ Jesus, abolished death, and he has proclaimed life to the good news. Hallelujah. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus went into the temple and began driving out those who were selling. According to scripture, he said, My house will be a house of prayer, but you have turned it into a robber's den taught in the temple every day. The chief priests and the scribes, with the support of the leading citizens, tried to do away with him. But they did not see how they could carry this out, because the people as a whole hung on his words. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My house will be a house of prayer. I suppose when we listen to the Gospels week by week and even day by day, if you're here at Mass with me, we don't necessarily notice the differences, uh, the distinctions or the emphases of the particular Gospels. But we finish the church's year with St Luke's Gospel, with those passages which come just before Jesus' passion and death, just before Holy Week. And it's a moment, in a sense, of triumph. In the last few days, we've heard readings about Jesus going towards Jerusalem and how important that is, this place of, of conflicting, um, conflicting uh, learning because you have the opposition to Jesus and you also have the great, uh, in a sense, of a victory or a triumphal entry into the city itself. And now he's in the temple and he's preaching. And we hear about him going into the temple and driving out those who were selling, but very little of that, because this is a house of prayer. He taught in the temple every day, we're told. Here we hear Jesus bringing his teaching to the centre of his faith, bringing his teaching to the holy city, beginning the actions which will lead to him being revealed to the whole world. As we ourselves are just about to begin Advent, the beginning of the church year, we're reminded about the conclusion of the story in the Gospels. The conclusion which will lead to that teaching being taken out to the end of the world. We will soon to begin, begin to celebrate the Nativity. And in this last week or so before Advent, we are reminded about his passion, his death, his resurrection, his ascension, and most important of all, the day of Pentecost and the preaching of the gospel to the world.
pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at my hand for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. I accept, O Lord, the gifts we offer in this time of peril. May they become for us by your power a source of healing and peace. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. His, in his death we celebrate in love. His resurrection we confess with living faith. And his coming in glory we await with unwavering hope. And so with all the angels and saints we praise you. As without end we acclaim holy, 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 Lord God of hosts. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into heaven, into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Saviour of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, Bernard our Bishop, William, David and Stephen his assistants, and all the clergy. Remember your servant Maureen Murphy, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that she who was united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who've fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed Apostles, with St. Thomas More, with blessed John Sugar, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours for ever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power 
and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always, and with your spirit. And so now across time and space, let's greet one another in the peace and love of Christ. Peace be with you all. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Body of Christ, bring me to everlasting life. The communion antiphon. Come to me, all who labour and are burdened, and I will refresh you, says the Lord. And now I invite you to make your own act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the holy sacrament of the altar. I love you above all things and I passionately desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come spiritually into my soul so that I may unite myself wholly to you now and forever. Amen. It used to do that, didn't it? One or two things I want to say before we finish. Um, hope you've enjoyed this Mass. Um, you might have, some of you might have just detected that I was in a bit of a rush this morning. I asked for a sound test at the beginning. I hope you've had sound during the Mass. I've not got my little monitor working, the battery's gone. I've been doing some recording for schools, so I've been changing from green to uh, white. And for some reason, I changed the altar today to green, and then I put a purple chasuble on. Don't ask me why. Advent in my head, I suppose. Uh, so uh, I apologise for that, if you'd noticed. And if you haven't noticed, I apologise for drawing your attention to it. But whatever the colours, of course, and they are important to us in the Catholic Church, uh, and they symbolise different things, whatever the colours, actually, it's where the heart is and that Christ's with us in the sacrament that matters more than anything. So that's always true, but I do apologise. Um, it's, on, it's only the second time it's happened um, during uh, the lockdown and uh, broadcast mass times. And of course, things like that, which normally nobody would mention and everybody would forget, uh, they're there to, uh, to see over and over again if we allow that to happen. A couple of um, petitions as well to keep with your prayers today, please. 
Uh, please pray for uh, Jenny. Uh, she's a mother of three. Her husband died nine weeks ago, and she's now got COVID. Everybody's very anxious in the family, so do please uh, keep her um, in your prayers. That's Jenny, uh, a mum who's, very, who's poorly at this time and also bereaved. And also please pray today for Emily. She's having a surgery on her eye today, or that's scheduled anyway. Uh, and so she's a five-year-old little girl, so do please, uh, and she's a twin too, do please uh, keep her in your prayers too. Also recently added to the prayers is Sister Leah Bannon, who's uh, uh, 83 and has, has got the virus. She's in, in a convent in Italy. And uh, so do please pray for her. And also we pray for Angie. Thanksgiving for the uh, treatment that she's had so far and a bone marrow transplant. She's making progress, but still poorly. So do please keep her in your prayers too. Um, and we are almost ready to finish. So I'll take the microphone back to the altar. Let us pray. O oh God, from whose hand we've received the medicine of eternal life, grant that through this sacrament we may glory in the fullness of heavenly healing through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. Thanks. <coughs> Excuse me. <laughs> Thanks be to God. <laughs>